What's going on, friends? Want to learn how to show? Sure you do. I promise that is the one and only showing pun that I will make in this video. This is a quick tutorial on how to show fabric. Showing is a sewing technique in which you replace your regular bobbin thread with elastic thread. You then sew in lines on top of woven, that's non-stretchy fabric, and the outcome is something that looks like this. A puckered looking fabric that has a good deal of stretch to it. Whoa, 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 one second there, Annika. I thought this was called smocking. Well, smocking can actually look kind of similar to show, but you can differentiate between the two because smocking is usually done with hand stitches with embroidery thread, and it's either applied to a pattern fabric or the stitches are used to create a pattern on the fabric. Showing, however, is done with a sewing machine. It creates a somewhat more stretchy fabric by using elastic in the bobbin and is usually done in a straight stitch in lines. So let's get into the how-to and then afterwards I'll show you a little sneak peek of the next project that I'll be uploading in just a few days that uses shirring. To the tutorial. For demonstration purposes I'll just be using this scrap piece of cotton woven fabric that I've ironed flat. If it's your first time shirring I highly recommend trying it out on scrap pieces first. Many different types of fabric can be shirred but lightweight cottons are probably the easiest type of fabric to shir. The fabric I'm using is a little thicker, probably about quilting weight, but it will still work out if it is this thick. It might just require some adjusting of machine tensions and stitch lengths. Now this may not be necessary depending on your application, but if at some stage you wish to hem the fabric piece that you're shirring and the shirring is going right up to the edges, you should hem it first because once the fabric is all elasticated and stretchy it'll be really difficult to hem. I'm just going to put a simple double folded hem on the top and bottom edges of my piece of fabric. Now it's time to draw some guidelines on the fabric. The guidelines need to go on the right side of the fabric. If you're using a material with lines or squares on it like gingham then this is a clever way to skip this step but if you don't have lines already on your fabric then at least for the first few times I recommend drawing some guidelines in chalk and then once you get the hang of it you can use the guidelines on your machine or even the edge of your presser foot as a guide or just eyeball it I'm going to draw guidelines on the right side of the fabric like this, each spaced half an inch. That's 1.25 centimeters if using metric from each other. I'm using a water erasable chalk pencil to do this. Now the fabric is prepared, it's time to wind the bobbin. Now this is what creates the shirt effect, using elastic thread in the bobbin. Elastic thread comes in all different sizes, but for showing light to medium weight fabric, using an elastic that's one millimeter wide works best. Keep in mind that the elastic will be visible on the wrong side of the fabric, so you will probably want to use an elastic that is a similar color to your fabric, especially if working with a semi-sheer fabric. The bobbin needs to be wound by hand. Now if you've been spoilt with an automatic bobbin winder on your machine like I have, then this can seem extremely tedious but it's important to wind it by hand because machines will stretch it out too much. As you hand wind the bobbin, you need to make sure you're not stretching the elastic thread at all. So go slowly. Once your bobbin is full or however full you need it to be, cut the elastic thread. The bobbin is then placed inside the bobbin case and then into your machine in the exact same way that you would load your regular bobbins. Bobbin. It's a fun word to say. So I'm popping this bobbin into my front loading bobbin as usual. Then it's usually a good idea to pull the elastic bobbin thread up out of the machine like you normally would before sewing and pulling it a little bit longer than usual. Now, shirring is usually performed using a straight stitch. You can use other stitch types to get different effects, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Set your machine to a regular straight stitch. Your stitch length will probably need to be lengthened from the regular setting that it's automatically on. I set my stitch length to four when the default stitch length is three. And the upper thread tension will most likely need to be adjusted as well. Depending on your machine, you might not need to adjust it, but for my machine, I find that turning the tension from four, which is the default, up to five makes the shirring work a lot better. On some machines, you might even have to turn the tension down. It's totally dependent on the machine that you have, and it'll change from machine to machine. Are you sure that Sher likes to shir and then share it? I couldn't help myself, I'm sorry for this. Okay, now we have all that set up, we can do the actual shirring. Woohoo! I'm going to sew straight lines on the right side of my fabric like this. At the end of each row, I'm going to pivot and go back up the next one without fastening off the stitches. You can fasten off your stitches at the end of each row with a back stitch and then cut it off, but it'll use more elastic thread doing it this way, and I'm all about being thrifty here. I'm also not going to sew right up to the edges. I'll leave about half an inch unsewn on both sides here. With the right side of the fabric facing up, do a back stitch of one to two stitches at the beginning, and then it's as simple as sewing straight along those guidelines.
thread lines. As you can see, the fabric is beginning to gather up a little here because the elastic thread underneath is pulling on the fabric where it's been sewn on. Then, stopping about half an inch before the edge of the fabric at the end of the first row, I put my needle down, pivoted 90 degrees, brought the needle up, carefully moved the presser foot to the next guideline, and then here you can gently pull the upper thread a little bit loose if you're getting bunching between rows. Then I put my needle back down through the next row's guideline, pivoted another 90 degrees, so I'm heading back in the opposite direction, and then I began sewing on the chalk guideline down the next row. So let's just speed this whole thing up. With each new row that I sewed, with the elastic in the bobbin, the fabric begins to bunch up. You will need to hold your fabric flat, which often means stretching it back out as the fabric will start becoming very elastic with the more rows that you sew. And then at the very end, I did a back stitch of only one to two stitches to hold the threads in place, and that's it. This is what it looks like after shirring. Now, if the edges of your shirt piece are not going to be sewn up into seams, then you will also want to do a straight stitch using regular thread in both the top thread and the bobbin down both edges like this to ensure that each row stays secure. But if both edges are going to be sewn up in seams, you don't really need to do this. Now, the very last step that makes it look just that little bit nicer is to get your iron and set it to maximum steam setting. Now, a lot of people recommend that you simply hold your iron just over the top of your newly shirred fabric and blast steam in it from there, but that seemed to be doing nothing for me and I had no problems ironing directly onto the fabric with my iron plate touching the right side of the fabric. And after doing that, the shirring just looks a little bit neater, makes it more evenly gathered at the top and bottom edges, and the stitches become a little tighter, which makes it shrink slightly too. Also, you can see I still have the chalk guidelines on the fabric. You'd want to wash those off, perhaps before ironing, to remove the guidelines if it was going to be part of a piece of clothing. But as this is just a test piece, I'm not going to bother with that step. Shirring makes the fabric about 1.5 to 2 times shorter than it originally was, depending on the stitch length you use, the thickness of the elastic thread, and the type of fabric that you're using. I measured it, and this piece became approximately 1.9 times shorter than its original length. So keep that in mind when you're using shirring as one piece of a larger project for example, as a panel on a dress. It's wise to do a small test piece using the sewing machine settings and a fabric that you eventually want to use just to determine how much shrinkage you'll get so that you can plan and cut your fabric accordingly. Troubleshooting, because sewing is never that simple. Number one, the first is to play around with your stitch length. Making your stitch length longer will make your fabric more gathered, Decreasing it will do the opposite, it'll make it less gathered. So if your fabric isn't shirring enough, turn the stitch length up if you can. Keep in mind that you need to do at least a few rows before you get the full effect of the shirring on the fabric. The second tip is to fine tune your top thread tension. Don't just turn it up slightly and leave it at that. You might need to turn it up even more, even more. You may even need to turn it down. You might need to play around with different settings until you find something that works. Number three, try hand winding your bobbin again. I know, that's annoying, but it is possible that you had a little bit of stretch when you wound it the first time, or just maybe not enough stretch. Yeah, that's right, you may just need to stretch it ever so slightly while winding the bobbin. It just totally has to depend on your sewing machine, and I am sorry if you have to redo this. Don't blame me. <laughs> Number four. Try using a walking foot attachment if you have one. While a regular presser foot will work for most machines, a walking foot may just be what you needed to help your machine grip the fabric a little bit better. And number five, the final troubleshooting tip that I have is to adjust the bobbin's tension. Just be really careful if you decide to do this and only as a last resort because you can mess up your bobbin doing this. So only do this if you know what you're doing. So if your sharing is just not turning out right after trying all the other troubleshooting steps, then you can turn this screw on your bobbin to the right to increase the tension or to the left to decrease it. Usually increasing it will solve most problems with shirring, but it could be the other way. There's just so many different types of machines out there that you might have to do something very strange to yours. When you turn the screw, remember exactly how much you turned it, i.e. one quarter of a full revolution, so you can return it to the same tension when you're finished shirring. If you forget, your regular sewing projects might start messing up until the bobbin tension is reset. Finally, you do not need a fancy computerized top of the range sewing machine to do this. Luchi's mom likes to tell me stories of showing a lot of her clothing in the 70s and early 80s using a you know, sewing machine from that period that basically only sewed with a straight stitch. Shirring can be done on pretty much any machine where you can put elastic thread in the bobbin. So what can you make with this? Well, in a few days time, I'll have a tutorial up on how to make a blouse that is shirred and has puffy sleeves and a square neckline. So get practicing on shirring and then you can follow along with my tutorial in a few days time. I'll see you soon and stay crafty everyone.
Thank you so much to the 600 Patreon supporters, the superhuman producers, and the small brands who are all a huge reason that I can make these videos available to hundreds of thousands of you for free. If you've learned lots from my videos, or if it's just the kind of stuff you want to see more of in the world, then vote with your dollars and consider supporting me on patreon.com forward slash Annika Victoria as a member, or for a one-off contribution, go to co-fi.com forward slash Annika Victoria. Your support means the world. <laughs>